Hello and welcome to another in our series of technical previews of CDO model repository integration in the Kepler release of the Eclipse Papyrus project. Today we'll be looking at storing properties view customization models in the repository. So let's start by reviewing the use case for properties view customization. Let's connect a repository and open some model. And here we see classes have a variety of properties, including the qualified name, which is a useful feature to see, <coughs> though it isn't editable. Interfaces also have qualified names, but we don't see a property for that. So why don't we add one? The highly extensible Papyrus tooling includes end-user customization of the properties view. So <coughs> already we see a difference from the Juno release. In the Juno release we could copy a customization model <coughs> and make modifications to it and that model was always stored in the workspace metadata area of the local workspace. Now we get another option when the CDO extension feature is installed to create a new context and store it in a repository. <coughs> so let's call this my UML. And we're asked in which repository to put it. I can select another one and it'll be opened implicitly. But uh, naturally I want to store this in the same place where I'm editing my model currently. So there we have it. A new model in a new properties view customization model in the repository. <coughs> and let's open up the preferences and we can see in the property views, now it shows up there. Let's enable that and disable the one that we copied it from and hit OK. We can ignore these warnings, they have nothing to do with UML. And so now our new properties model is in effect. But of course we haven't made any changes to it yet, so let's do that. Let's edit that. And now we can edit it in place here. Oh, that's a lot to wade through. Let's filter. Ah, here's the interface. Good. <coughs> Okay, so let's start by taking a copy of this property. That's a good template to start from. This will be a read-only property, which is implicit by a qualified name attribute itself being read-only anyways. <coughs> but let's be explicit. And it will get a qualified name computed by default from the name of the property. So let's save that. Okay, and now we come back here, and voila, there's a qualified name property for interfaces. Now you might be wondering, well, where is it in the repository if, if supposedly it's stored in there? Well, the properties view customization models comprise generally a large number of XML files that describe the UI. These are the XWT files defining all the sections, the layout, and, and what uh, widgets appear. <coughs> so the way these are stored in the repository is in a brand new to the Kepler release of CDO feature called text, uh, the CDO text resource. So this is this provides named uh, character large object storage in which we just dump all of these files. So let's see how it looks in the repository. Open the view. Ah, so here's something that we don't see in any of the view in any of the viewers that present model repository content in Papyrus. 
This is a folder structure laid out exactly as customization models are stored in the Eclipse workspace in the Juno release and also in Kepler if you choose to store them there. And all of these numerous resources, these are all CDO text resources that are loaded and parsed by the UI engine at runtime. <coughs> so that's what that looks like. Now one of the advantages of storing these models in the repository, of course, is that we can share them and collaboratively edit them with other users on the same repository. And also, as we do our own work on various different machines, we can uh, always get the same models in every workspace because they all come out of the central repository. Of course, one of the consequences of working in uh, with models from the repository is what if the repository isn't available? At the time I need to do some editing. So for example, let's go open a model in the workspace that also contains some interfaces that now we want to show the qualified names on. So of course I get that property because I have the properties view customization model from the repository applied. So indeed, what will happen now if I close the connection to the repository? Oh, I get a little notification down here saying that the my UML properties view configuration is no longer available. And indeed, now we're back to using the UML context that we copied it from as a fallback because that one is available. So again, classes have qualified name, property, interfaces do not. So what if I connect to the repository again? Ah, <coughs> it remembered that we had the myUML configuration applied that was in the repository, so now that it's become available again, there it is. Okay, so that's great. So we have reasonably uh, sensible handling of the transient availability of these property view configurations. Now the other consequence, of course, of sharing these properties view models in the repository is that other users might edit them. So let's see what happens when we do that. Here's another workbench that we can connect to the same repository <coughs> and we can customize the property view. So here is that property view configuration. And we open it up. And again, let's look for that inter single interface view. And let's be mischievous and play a little prank on our friend in the other workbench and give this a silly name, a qualified name. And there's a bit of a glitch in the editor that is unrelated, that it doesn't, uh, doesn't properly detect changes in the properties, which is ironic. And there we go, we save. Oh, what's this? The first user in this workbench is getting a notification that the properties view has changed. So indeed we see updated. The labels changed. So in addition to seamlessly handling the coming and going of properties view configuration models in the repository, we also handle changes committed by other users automatically. So there you have it, a short introduction to properties view configuration models in Papyrus model repositories. Thank you.